Brodies. Thank you for stopping by. What am I doing? Right now, I am sewing a seam to piece two pieces of fabric together. Sounds like quilting, doesn't it? <laughs> I am creating the back for the Sweetwater fabric quilt that I was making for my sister's oldest grandson who is going to be heading off to college later this year. It is just so wonderfully exciting, scary. Oh, that first nest, that, uh, that first chick that leaves the nest. Um, he has not, he's gotten several acceptance letters, but he has not decided where. So it's going to be interesting to hear what um, he decides. It'll be interesting and why he decides the choices because they are all over the place. Um, where he applied is on different parts of um, the state of California. So I don't think he applied out of state, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, so if you remember, I was uh, piecing a Sweetwater quilt from a kit that I got from Fat Quarter Shop, and it was so easy to go together. And then the backing <coughs> I ordered at the same time is this, I just love this, uh, his favorite color is green, by the way. This uh, fabric has all these street signs. State Street, Front Street, Park Avenue, Church Road. <coughs> so I'm um, piecing the two pieces of the back together so that I can uh, layer it. And I use Hobbs 8020 fusible batting. Um, you know, I was watching... Um, stitching with the sisterlies on their quilt tube which I am very excited about quilt tube and uh, if you go over to Facebook you can join their uh, stitching with the sisterlies uh, Facebook group which um, is just filling up with fabulous fun awesome inspiring and abling quilters but um, they were talking about a sit down machine as opposed to a long arm. And I have had two long arms and one sit down uh, Sweet 16. Um, and I no longer have any of those. So I have to uh, figure out uh, my quilting, whether I uh, get Cheryl to do it from Stitching with the Citrulies or send it out or do it myself. And this one I'm going to just do myself. The, the difference between the long arm versus the sit-down, that's two different things. And some are computerized, some long arms are computerized, and some of them are free motion, totally free motion. And um, having had both, if I were to make a choice, I probably, if I was younger... <laughs> I would probably go with a long arm because you there's no issue with loading the quilt. You don't have to do anything but load it onto the bars, tighten it up, stretch it out, and you're ready to go. With the Sweet 16, you have to either spray baste it, uh, use fusible batting, which is what I did, or... Um, tape it and actually pin it with um, safety pins to keep it from migrating, the layers from migrating. And as I got older, it seemed like the sit down was the way to go. But in this last move, I thought, you know, when I look at how much I used it, it wasn't very often. And I never really spent the time becoming proficient at it. So I never liked my quilting as much. Now this particular quilt, I'll use fusible batting. Um, I can't use the spray based it because I have asthma and the spray just activates that. But um, I can use the fusible batting and then I'm just going to do some cross hatching, some simple things. And that I can do on my domestic machine. But boy, sometimes I think, oh, 
it'd be so fun just to be a little load of quilt on there. And yeah, yeah. So there's all those choices. But I am currently just trying to piece the back of this quilt. And then I'm going to use Hobbs 8020, like I said, fusible batting, layered up. And because it's a very linear quilt, I think I'm just going to be cross-hatching it. The really fun thing about all of this is I had enough fabric left over that I can make a matching pillowcase to the quilt, which will be fun. <laughs> yeah, I just wonder. It's so amazing how fast time flies. I mean, I remember when he was born, and he was just absolutely the most adorable toddler. Um, yeah. Boy, time flies. Time really flies. So that's what I am doing today. I have um, been... Kind of busy in the beehive. Busy in the beehive. Uh, I was trying to figure out, I have a retreat coming up. And I started, I was watching the Floss Boss and Cousins. And someone had asked her what she takes to retreat. And it just activated that, uh, oh my God, I have a retreat coming up. But I think... I think I'm going to approach the retreat totally differently this year. Normally I haul half the beehive down there and it's going to be somewhat a little bit different anyway because um, not everyone can come that would normally come and so that always changes like the climate. It just does. Um, and so I've been thinking about what do I really want to accomplish on retreat. And I decided, I, you know, about 80% of my life is handwork. And so I decided that I'm going to just make it a totally handwork retreat. I'm not going to take a machine down. Oh, I can hear Robin screaming right now. Um, but I don't think I'm going to take a sewing machine down. It will then either cause a major tantrum or force me to make some headway on some handwork projects that I really want to make headway on. And I'll take some cross stitch down there too, but that's handwork too. So it'll be... Um, It'll be a different retreat for me. And I'm really excited because one day of the retreat, I'm going to play hooky and go visit my quilt group that's in Sisters. And I have missed them so much. They're such a creative bunch. And they're having a stitch day during that time I'm down in Central Oregon. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Of course, you know, it's still days, a couple weeks away, so I can change my mind many more times, many more times, you know. I have been thinking about my class. I signed up for a class. Now, every year, I, um, for the last, gosh, dozen or more years, I've been on the teaching staff at Quilters Affair in Sisters, Oregon. You know, I just kind of fell into it because um, proximity and I'm always willing to try something uh, once and see if I like it. And I've taught different classes, uh, a, color, a color class, a miniature class, a wool class, and then the last couple years I've been doing sit and stitch, which is my favorite, I have to say, because I get to meet all kinds of quilters who are doing all kinds of different types of quilting. So I do get inspired um, in that. 
and the interaction between the students is amazing. And I've met some amazing people. I mean, uh, I could list them a, a, a mile long. But I decided that this year I, um, I was contacted by one of the teachers because I've been trying to take this class for years but it's always on the day that I am working. And so I got a heads up that it wasn't going to be on a day that I was working. So I was there at the time, you know, your registration is going on and you're gonna sign up, you press enter and do all the things and I got in the class. So Monday is my free day. I am going to take Scott Hansen's trees class. Now, I'm here to tell you that for years I've been trying to take that class and never thought I was able to get into it. So about three years back, I bought his postcard. And what I mean by that is that all of the um, teachers that teach at Quilters Affair are asked to make a postcard, a fabric postcard that is then framed and then they're auctioned off to raise money for the arts in the schools and sisters um, and the music. So I finally a couple years ago thought I am the chances of me getting into one of his classes uh, is like so low that I went ahead and bid on his card that he made because it is a miniature of the tree and so here's what happens to the teachers cards they get framed so this is his design of this tree and he is part uh, his business is called the blue nickel studio so you can go online and take a look at what he's up to. He's very, very creative. But I just loved, I what I loved the most about this particular pattern was every time I would go by the classroom, the variety of fabrics that people chose. Oh my gosh, they were all so amazing and such a wide range of choices on what different quilters wanted their tree to look like. So I decided, yep, I am going to get in this class, and I did. So I picked up the pattern, and here's the pattern. This is what the quilt looks like in its full entirety. I'm not sure, um, let's see, what, what size is this, 68? Let's see, is it 68? Well, the batting is 68 by 68. Um, so it's probably, oh, 59 and a half by 60. Um, I am going to be creating this wall hanging because it's going to be a wall hanging. So I don't know how many trees I will make, but I'm using my Asian fabrics and making it a, um, ode to my maternal family. I think it'll be interesting how it turns out. So I'm really looking forward to it. But this is called the Painted Forest. I mean, some people have done it in Christmas fabric. Some people have done it all in, in the monochromatics. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, so I'm, ex I'm really excited about that. And I also... I also have to decide what... I'm going to make for a postcard, and I've got to get on that. Um, I might uh, try to get that all done um, before I go down so I can just drop it off. It's a absolutely gorgeous day. It's freezing cold. <laughs> I know. It's freezing cold. Not freezing cold. I mean, it's not freezing cold. It's cold, but it's sunny. And so I'm going to, after we're done here, I'm going to be working out in the garden. Um, going to plant some. I saw a reel on Instagram uh, 
about someone, uh, you know, don't judge me. For whatever reason, I save. I'm not a hoarder, except for toilet paper rolls, the cardboard rolls. I don't know why. I save them all because I keep thinking my grandkids are going to make crafts out of them or something. I don't know. But then I saw a reel on Instagram in which a person cut four slits in the bottom and folded it up and then filled it with dirt and then planted their seeds in it. And that was their start container. They put a whole bunch of them into a box outside. And then when they sprouted, you just took the whole roll and everything and stuck that in the ground because the paper would disintegrate. I knew I was saving them for a reason. I knew it. I knew it. I am so amazingly smart sometimes. I just, so I'm going to be doing that this afternoon. Yesterday, yesterday I planted, um, I cleared out my raspberry bed. Um, I planted carrots. I planted some tomatoes and some cilantro and some peas. I know I'm taking a risk because who knows the way the weather's been this year who knows but today I'm going to be doing some seed planting with my toilet paper rolls. I did get I'm reaching over here I'm reaching over here Oh, I'll bring this close. I did get my march done right here the little the little bee and then next will be the rabbit so i'm keeping up on this kathy schmidt's project you can get these panels off of spoon flower you can take a picture of that qrs code right there and what I hadn't done until this last block was I actually went on because Kathy Schmitz has a YouTube channel in which she is giving instructions on how to stitch each one of them, or not how to, but the way she is stitching them. And so I looked at this and I thought, I'm going to I'm going to watch that. I haven't watched that before, but I'm going to watch that. And I was surprised. So I would recommend that that if you are going to do this and it comes in three different colorways, blue, red, and green, that uh you take a look at that because some of the things she said, I would have never thought to do. And when she explains how she stitches it, I thought, "Oh, Okay, I mean, she is so laid back. I mean, there's no right or wrong for her, but I was um, really n n nicely surprised by the fact that as much embroidery as I have done, that thinking outside the box, the way someone else would embroider something is a good thing. So I got my march done keeping up, keeping up on projects. Yes. Then I went to, I went to, um, uh, the closest craft store to me well, I should say the only craft store in my town, and it's at the edge of my town, which is kind of weird. I mean, uh, it seems like, I, it's like I told G the other day, I said, I never thought I'd live in such a big city. And he goes, this is not a big city. This is smaller than Bend. But because it's a suburb of a suburb of a suburb of the greater Portland, Oregon area, I tend to think of it as a big city. But in reality, there are, it's, everything is so much more convenient. But the thing about it is the only craft store in, within my city is Hobby Lobby. 
Michaels and Joanne. Oh, and what's going on with Joanne's? Oh my gosh, they cannot. But I have to drive to the next community, which isn't that far. I mean, I'm not. I'm not complaining. But what was funny was I went to Hobby Lobby to get thread. That's the only place here to get thread, uh, unless I want to drive further. And I wanted to get thread because what I decided to do is on this particular quilt that has been languishing around, I had to, in the process, in the process of having these moments, that would be a great screenshot, these moments of organization and do I really need everything I have. I found this whole pile, pile of tops. Mea culpa, mea culpa, I think I'm a topper. So I saw this top and it was this beautiful quilt that I remember that I bought in Merrill at the Tater Patch. I believe that's where. And it's a very simple quilt. But this fusible, these fusible birds, I wanted to buttonhole down. And I did not have the gray thread for my sewing machine, because I was going to do it by my sewing machine. I was not going to hand, I have enough, this is cotton, I have enough, I have a gazillion buttonhole stitches I need to do. So I wanted to do this one just with my sewing machine. So I needed gray thread. And um, so I went to Hobby Lobby to get the gray thread. I just ran in for two different colors of gray thread. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And um, I'm going to try to figure out how to do this buttonhole around these curves uh, with the gray thread before I quilt it. And when I was coming out of the parking lot, I heard someone call my name and I, it was raining, it was raining. And so I, I kind of stopped and I looked around and I was going, where's that voice coming from? And then I kind of peeked around and there was a woman there who, her name is Sue, I think I got that right, and she, spends time with us on this channel and it was so nice of her to say hello I, I i thought that was nice to nice to meet someone in the neighborhood i guess but that's what i'm going to do with that quilt okay what else what else have we got going on here okay 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 i'm looking at uh, I'm Mrs. Kravitz, or Hyacinth Bouquet up here, paying attention to the neighborhood. Everybody's out. Everybody is out. Um, I heard from one of the winners in the last um, quote roadies, which was the giveaway from Fat Quarter Shop, a $35 gift card, and a copy of the Cream and Sugar book. I've only heard from one of the winners. So I contacted her today, and um, I'm hoping I hear from the other person, because I don't know about you, but I am ready. I'm already starting on this block of the month. I even have a project box. So if you remember, I decided to do this block of the month from the Fat Quarter Shop. I, it's not a block of the month that is currently going on. You, uh, this fabric is not even available that was used in here. But I never wanted to use this fabric. I wanted to challenge myself. And it's a 12-month program, and so I'm starting right now with block one and it'll just and I'm only doing one block a month <laughs> whatever not 
not one block a month, but whatever the block of the month is for that. Because what I found out when I was doing the very first one was that when you cut it out, it makes two blocks. So I have two blocks done. And I realized that I've gotten lazy. I've become a lazy quilter. And that means that, you know, I just kind of throw together these quilts that are great. I mean, I'm not berating them. They're great quilts. They, um, But there are a lot of strip piecing, you know what I mean? I found out <laughs> the cutting instructions and the piecing instructions were challenging for my brain. I was like, oh my God. Gosh, I have not done this kind of piecing in a while. And so I I said, this is going to be great. I mean, this is the kind of thing that I want to do. I mean, every morning I play um, Wordle, Connections, Spelling Bee, um, Mini Cross Stitch, and then Robin got me on stuck on strands. Oh, my God. So, you know, I'm constantly trying to fire up the brain cells. And so, this, is, this process is going to fire up those quilting brain cells because I, I tell you, <laughs> I read the first block, which is a five-patch star block, three times and I cut out the fabric and I was like, did I cut out the wrong thing? I, I ripped out so much that it made me realize how amazing this project is going to be. And you say, that doesn't sound amazing. That doesn't sound amazing. But it is because it's forcing me to think outside my comfort zone, which I, at this point in my life, kind of like. I was always, uh, I mean, I was always on the edge child for my parents. I mean, and then I just kind of got lazy, I guess. And now I'm like, oh my gosh. So the first block is this one here. And the way they make you <clears throat> cut out the pieces and piece it to get that block is pretty darn, it's a route. And they come out perfect. They come out perfect. So with that said, I am doing my blocks totally scrappy. Totally scrappy. Um, I'm using the whole pile, I have a whole pile of Americana 1800s and Civil War fabrics. I mean a pile. Because back in the day, oh, I just love those fabrics. And my friend Sandy and Irene used to come over to my house. This is way before Sisters when I lived in Bend. And we would once a month make Civil War blocks. And so I just love those fabrics. I love the history, the nostalgia, the old-fashionedness of them. And I decided, although this quilt, Cream and Sugar, looks, you know, pretty monochromatic like a lot of subdivisions right now, um, I was going to use those fabrics and I was going to make it scrappy. I didn't realize till I started cutting that every time I cut a block I get two blocks. So two of my blocks will be out of the same fabrics, which means that it'll have a continuity that I think will be great. So here's my first two blocks. Isn't that pretty? And, and the background and the brown fabric in the center, those were just little scraps that I had. So I've made the first blocks and now I'm not going to make another block till the end of April. Um, once a month. This is my April blocks. So May, 
I'll make the next blocks, which is, let's see what the next blocks are. Uh, this is supposed to not be stressful. So you have a whole month to make each one. So next month is Grandmother's Choice Block. And I'm going to pick totally different fabrics for that one. This is going to be fun, so I hope some of you will join me. The book is available on the Fat Quarter Shop, and you can do it out of any fabrics you want. Um, I originally intended to do it out of a fabric line called Beach House, but because I don't really read and pay attention, I didn't realize until... I went back and I wondered why is my fabric not coming? That that fabric doesn't even get released till July. Well, I was not going to wait, so I had to regroup and decide. Okay, if I was to now uh, choose something else, I'm still going to get that beach house fabric line because it looks awesome. Um, but I decided I have this whole pile of fabric. I'm going to use this. Yeah. So that's what I did. Okay, one more little strip along here. Oh, I'm almost done. Then I can press this open. I can layer it up. Yeah. So what am I going to take to retreat? since I decided not to take a sewing machine. I can't believe I'm not taking a sewing machine. I decided, besides my cross stitch, and I haven't decided on that either, so you'll have to go over to Stitch Roadies, the next one, when I actually decide what I'm going to take. Um, I decided on these two projects. Now, I started this in 2019 from Primitive Gatherings. I love this quilt. I love this quilt because it is so outside my color box. And Lisa really did some awesome stitching. And I have several of the blocks done. But I want to... Um, I want to get these blocks. Look at this one. It the stitching isn't overpowering, but it really adds to the wool. Look at that. Oh my gosh. I could can conceivably get this done this year. So I'm going to take this, and the, and the reason I'm taking this and the other project that I'm taking is that they are all, I don't have to think about it, because when I bought this, I bought the threads for it. And so I have all the threads required. I know, mean, it's ridiculous that they have been locked in this box. Um, so I need to get it down, done so I can move the threads out of this box back into the thread, the general thread population. Yeah, that sounds kind of weird, doesn't it? But yeah. Um, so that's why I am going to take this one, because I don't even have to think about it. I have my um, Sue Spargo wallet with all my needles and everything I need for this project, and all the threads and the patterns, and so I am taking this with me. So that is, we'll see if I can make some real headway on that. The other project I am going to take is this one, which I showed you just uh, an episode or so ago, and that
that is the heart to hand. This is a heart to hand pattern for those of you that asked. And it's my sewing room. And I'm making this for someone. So um, initially in the bottom row, which I said before, there were pockets. So if you saw the scissors down below, there it's actually a pocket where a pair of scissors could fit in. I'm not doing that. I am just making the blocks. And so this is my project that I am uh, taking to Pioneer Quilts for Woolly Wednesday. So once a month at Pioneer Quilts in Portland, uh, we meet for Woolly Wednesday, which is a really nice, comfortable place to stitch and share. And that is, um, that's one of those things that I miss. Back in the day, there were all this variety of stitchers and age groups and you would pick up tips from those that maybe were a little more proficient or older and you had an opportunity to share with someone who was younger or new to the craft. I miss all that. So I make a point to try to go to Woolly Wednesday at Pioneer Quilts, which is a bucket list shop in Portland, Oregon. So if you ever come to Portland, you've got to um, you've got to stop there. So this last time I ended up stitching my um, pin cushion and started the scissors and as with the other project, the reason I'm taking this one, oh my gosh, so much is done. So much is done. I mean, here's another pin cushion with the lace on it, but it also is a box that has thread that's hiding out in it. And I just want to get it done and move it out of, because you know, I, I don't know about you, but you keep, I keep buying thread for projects when there's probably thread that I need hiding out in other project boxes. So these are the two biggest culprits, and I am going to take these and get them done. Okay, I guess that's about it. I want to go outside. I filled my bird feeder up and my squirrel um, peanut wreath. I have one of those... Uh, kind of curly cue wreaths that you stuff peanuts in for the squirrels. I'm telling you, the crows, the crows went crazy. I mean, it was empty in, in the day that I hung it up. So that was pretty, they are, um, you know, they probably are uh, feeding their young at this point because there's so many big trees around here that uh, there's a lot of nests. And you can kind of tell there's a tree that's behind a neighbor's house across the road. And you can tell that there's a crow's nest in there because the two crows keep going back and forth, back and forth. Yeah. Okay. That's where I'm at. Thank you, thank you so much. Please, if you have a chance, please subscribe. I'll take a thumbs up. And check out the Facebook page, Stitching with the Sisterlies, because we are having fun over there. And Quilt Tube is just going to keep growing, which is such a wonderful community for quilters to connect up. You guys take care. Enjoy the sun if you're having sun. Stay inside if you're having snow. I'm sorry. And we'll see you next time. Love you guys.